and the last one is gastric secretion which here elicited by gastric inhibitory polypeptides this one the main one that have the ability to stimulate the insulin secretion next also start calling here regarding the neurotransmitters we have acetylcholine it is the main cholinergic neuron that parasympathetic have the ability to increase salivary secretion gastric secretion and pancreatic secretion norepinephrine the on epinephrine it is sympathetic and it is mainly for controlling the sphincters as we said last time and this is all the time for contraction of the sphincters we have to know this in this area that's all the time regarding the stomach per se it has my enteric plexus and mesenteric plexus both of them we have a connection with sympathetic and parasympathetic as we said last time when we have anything here inside the stomach only one neuron will be dominate the other per se if it is parasympathetic will dominate the sympathetic activity so will be increasing secretion increase motility of the stomach and uh, have all the normal regarding also peristalsis while if these increase the outflow of sympathetic activity it is this one will abolish the action of parasympathetic and will have decreasing secretion decreasing motility this is this one should yani keep in your mind also here we have gastrin releasing polypeptides and this is the one that's mainly have for gastric secretion or increase gastric secretion also another two neurotransmitter keeping in your mind the main four things as we said last time we have as we said here gastrin secretin motilin gib cholecystokinin the main one here gastrin is secreted from mainly as we say antrum and also from the duodenum this is a duodenal the duodenal uh, g cells or from the duodenum has the ability to produce gastrin and the gastrin it is 34 amino acids while the gastrin from the stomach from the antrum it is 17 amino acids so the difference in the chains of the amino acids while the action will be the same look here the gastrin will be stimulated by acetylcholine coming from parasympathetic nervous system by the vagus main vagus nerve also stimulated by production of peptones or peptides and amino acids partially digested proteins will stimulate the enteral g cells and also the duodenal g cells to produce or to secrete gastrin in the bloodstream also stretch have the ability to produce the same action we know that if you have yeah if you have the stomach we have two things here we have long feedback mechanism from the stomach if you have a stretch that's mean the food entering the stomach and by research stretch receptor on the wall of the stomach will be increasing in this side this will produce two feedback mechanism one it is short one and the other is long the short mechanism by enteroenteric response that's mean modulation 
of the secretion by enteric nervous system. The long one, that's mine, by afferent neurons of the vagus nerve will be going to medulla oblongata into the nucleus of the vagus and retaining back by the vagus to increase the secretion of gastrin and other secretion from the stomach. So, in other words, it's called vagu vagal, vagu vagu vagal reflex, vagu vagal reflex. The other one here we have when the Acidity, that's mean inside the stomach, we have mainly the pH inside the stomach. It is acidic. If the pH inside the stomach, it's between 1.8 to 3.5 mainly. This is will be an activating factor or a stimulating factor for the chief cell to produce pepsinogen. 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 This pepsinogen is an inactive form. We have the ability to produce pepsin. And pepsin, it is the active form of pepsinogen, which is responsible for partially digested proteins. In range of pH from 1.8, to 3.5 of pH. If this one not okay, that's mean we have pH more than 3.5. This conversion will be inhibited. And if the pH is more than 7.2 will be a reversible conversion. This is important points. So the pH, it is the main factor here regarding either the conversion from a psionogen to pepsin or from pepsin to pepsinogen. This one, if it is 1.8 to 3.7, 3.5. Here, it is more than 3.5. But Bishart Mikunj reaching 7.2. When it is 7.2, it will be irreversible conversion. Continue. So here, as we talk, gastrin can be a main factor or stimulant for parietal cell, and sheaf cell of the stomach. Parietal cells, mainly in the fundus and the body, mainly the body of the stomach. Sheaf cell, mainly also the same, mainly all through the stomach. Parietal cells have G cells to produce gastrin in response of all these, either stretch, acetylcholine, or partially digested proteins, peptones, called peptones. Also, parietal cells have another secretion which is called intrinsic factor. An intrinsic factor, as we know, it's important in absorption, intrinsic factor. It is very important for absorption of P12. That's why if we have a patient with 
defect in parietal cells per se postgastrectomy. This intrinsic factor will not be there. That's why we have deficiency of P12 vitamin. And anemia here, which is called macrocytic, macrocytic anemia. Macro, macrocytic type of anemia. This anemia, macrocytic, not like iron deficiency anemia. The iron deficiency anemia, it is due to iron will have type of anemia called macrocytic, microcytic and hypochromic. Hypochromic, يعني الصبغة داخلها والحجم حقها صغير. Hypochromic anemia. We'll continue. The other one here is secretin. As illustrated by the by the color of secretin, it is green in color, merely from the duodenum and upper jejunum. The secretin have many actions. Number one, it have to inhibit gastric secretion. This is number one. Also, decrease the gastric motility and gastric secretions. Secretin have liver and bile secretion. So it, it stimulate the bile secretion from the liver. Another one here, motilin, and the motilin mainly, it's had the ability to increase the peristalsis. The peristalsis during fasting. Here we have, as we said last time, migratory motor complex. And we said in the migratory motor complex type of movements, it have the ability to listen, to not this the contents between meals in fasting person. It is inhibited when the patient is feeding or the person is fed. And this motilin have to stimulate this migratory motor complex every one and a half hour. And it has three phases as we said last time. Neural here also GIB, the GIB, this is responsible for insulin. For insulin, as we said last time. CCK is a type of secretion, or is a hormone, and the CCK is hormone coming from the duodenum and have the ability to inhibit gastrin secretion and the stimulation of the liver and biliary system to squeeze the bile into the duodenum by the action also on the umbrella of water to be relaxed. So it helps in contraction of the gallbladder, relaxation sphincter of OD, decreasing gastric secretion and gastrin from the stomach and decrease the motility of the stomach. Next. As we said last time here, we have hormones, paracrines, neocrines. For regulation.
Now we're talking about the stomach here. The stomach is the JCAB organ in the epigastrium. Contains four parts. The fundus, the cardia. This is the stomach. This is the first part of the denim, second part of the denim, fourth part of the denim, and jejunum. We have here the cardia, here the fundus, here the body. This is the antrum, and this is the pylorus, and this is the pyloric sphincter. The pyloric sphincter regulates the rate of gastric emptying into the duodenum. As we know here, regarding the rate, when there is peristalsis coming from three areas, from the cardia, like this, towards the antrum, and from the body, from the antrum, reaching the pylorus. It is, if we have, per se, 30 mil, of chyme reaching here, we have here the pyloric area mixing action by vertical on this coming peristalsis. That's why it spurs to the duodenum around three mil of chyme and retaining back of 27 mil to be mixed with the gastric secretion. And this is the controlling emptying of the stomach. The capacity of the stomach in general is around 1.5 liter. And here it's mentioned the pyloric sphincter regulates the rate of gastric emptying the duodenum. The gastric or GIT physiology function of the stomach are generated to digest food as proteins and propel the digested materials to the small intestine for final digestion. The gland and cells of the stomach secrete di gastric digestive enzymes. Stomach, we have parietal cells, as we said last time. We have chief cells, we have antral G cells, and mu mucus neck cells. Parietal cells, this is the cells in the stomach responsible for SCL secretion and intrinsic factor. This is for P12 vitamin absorption. Chief cells in the stomach it is responsible for production of pepsinogen. That's to convert the protein to, or to be converted to its active form is called pepsin. And the pepsin is hormone for digestion responsible for digestion of proteins. The antral G cells, as we said last time, it has G cells. This type of G cells is around 17, it is 17 amino acids. Mucus neck cells, it's important regarding the barrier or the inside of the stomach, we have a barrier. It's contained from mucus cells, our neck cells in both sides and also bicarbonate. And main action is to protect the stomach from these digestive enzymes, not to be eaten by itself. The reservoir fraction of the stomach receives a large volume, that's mean 1.5 liter, with little increase in pressure. Receptive relaxation is part of swallowing reflex. As we said last time, if you mention here, if you have the stomach, Reception is here, in the area of the fundus. We have a stress receptor. This stress receptor have the ability to receive certain volume by the action of vagus nerve. And it is a local, because as we said last time, it's vagal. that means the afferent through the vagus nerve and efferent through the vagus nerve. The residual fraction of the stomach is held by the fundus because the fundus have thin wall and very low resistance to being stretched.
here this slides illustrating the ion transport in parietal cells. As we know, the main function of the parietal cell to produce HCL secretion, HCL secretion, very important. If we want to produce HCL, so we have to produce two things here, hydrogen ions and chloride ions. So we have certain actions happening, starting from this point. We have, as we, this is apical, that's mean towards the lumen, and basolateral, the other side, towards the blood vessels here. Inside the parietal cells, we have mitochondria at the end product of its respiration or this metabolism to produce carbon dioxide. The carbon dioxide will be by combining of water will produce carbonic acid. This carbonic acid will be dissociating to hydrogen ions and bicarbonate ions. As you know, this reaction is very important in many areas of our body. We find it, we find it in the saliva, we find it in the pancreas, we find it in RBCs, many in the renal system. So keep it in your mind. This reaction by combining carbon dioxide and water, production of carbonic acid, association to hydrogen ions and bicarbonate. So at the end of this reaction here, we have hydrogen ions. This is one of the component of SCL secretion. As we know here, the hydrogen will be to apical part by ATPase pump. This is ATPase pump, it's called hydrogen potassium ATPase pump. And this is the main pump to, to produce hydrogen ions into the lumen of the parietal cells. And it is an active process. The other component, it is chloride from coming. Where am from where it's coming, this chloride, this chloride. As we know, production of carbon dioxide by metabolism in, that, in the mitochondria inside parietal cells, combined with water, carbonic acid, will be here bicarbonate. This bicarbonate, as we know, have the ability to change with chloride. All the time, it's very important. What's called chloride tide or shift. Any region have high bicarbonate will have low chloride. And low bicarbonate will be high chloride. This is very important in many aspects. And it's called tide. Because here bicarbonate going to the blood stream, here blood vessels, here will be gastric veins. In the S area will be gastric veins. So the blood washing from the stomach, away from the stomach, will be alkaline, while the arterial blood coming, coming to the stomach will be acidic. And this is the idea of chloride shift or tide, or chloride tide. So chloride will be inside the cells. Now we need, uh, we need some mechanism to transfer this chloride into the apical region. As we know, this, this chloride coming to inside, this is another ATPase pump, and we know that ATPase sodium potassium ATPase pump, it is to introduce two potassium inside the cells, and three outside the cells by sodium. So the end result, two positive inside, three positive outside. So the end result will be minus one. And this is the main ATP's bomb to revert any cell to its resting membrane potential. So potassium here, we have another 
mechanism here potassium coming inside from this ATPase pump and going inside also so the potassium will have another mechanism here that's colloid have its channel to be diffused to outside so the colloid when diffusing to outside will combining with hydrogen ions in the apical region and this combination by SCL by SCL so hydrogen plus colloid will give us SCL This uh, slides will show us also that gastric secretion will be submitted by histamine. So the first one was to produce HCL, either gastrin. Now histamine. Also, the other stimulant for HCL is acetylcholine. For parasympathetic nervous system. Presume effects of histamine on the parietal cells, it is stimulated. It has a stimulatory action on the parietal cells to produce LHCL. This is hydrogen ions and chloride ions, as we said before. Gastric motility in fat person, this is the one that we are talking about last time with you. This is the motility in fat person, that's mean when you are not eating or you are fasting, we have magnetometer F complex. We talk about it. Dodinal control of gastric emptying. This is important here. Acid causes re release of secretine. And enteric neural reflexes and vagovagal reflex. As we said, if you have very acidic media inside the duodenum or partially digested proteins or peptones, peptones, this will stimulate the secretin to be secreted. And the fats mainly will stimulate the cholecystokinin and GIP, amino acid and also GIP mainly for stimulated by carbohydrates, carbohydrates. Amino acids and peptides or peptones release gastrin. Hypertonicity releases uncharacterized enterogastrin and illicit and neural reflex. This is the main things that controlling the gastrin to decrease the emptying. If you have now partially digested protein, acidic media, hypertonicity will lead to this secretion from the duodenum to stop or decrease the gastric emptying. And this is the main actions here. Hypertonicity, amino acid, partially digested proteins, fats, that mean partially yani fatty acids. All of these will produce at the end a gastric inhibitory peptides, cholecystokinin and secretin. And this is the main actions here to decrease the emptying of the stomach. Again, if you have gastric mainly from the Antrum and the duodenum and the jejunum, cholecystokinin mainly from the duodenum and jejunum and ileum, secretin from the duodenum and jejunum and small amounts in ileum, GIP, which is responsible for insulin secretion, here it is duodenum and jejunum, motilin, it is the same. Why hormones regulate gastric emptying, cholecystokinin, gastrin, gastric inhibitory bubble peptide, and secretin or promote constriction of pyrex filter? Very important here. Cholecystokinin. Gastrin, GIB, secretin. It leads to decrease the gastric emptying. That means it's constrict the pyloric sphincter to decrease the rate of gastric emptying. Secretin and gastric inhibitory polypeptides decrease force of antra contraction. Gastrin and cholecystokinin increase force of antra contraction. And the most circumstantial, the effect of the pyrox sphincter predominates, and all of these tend to slow gastric emptying. Here are the words. The most important thing is here. All of these 
will decrease the gastric emptying. Okay, duodenal control of gastric emptying. If you have now here in positivity, that means increase or stimulate. Negativity, that means decrease. Autonomic nervous system, either parasympathetic or sympathetic. Sympathetic will decrease the gastric emptying rate. As we said before, parasympathetic will increase the gastric emptying rate. Also, we have enteric nervous system by stress receptors in the duodenum that elicit its action to decrease the gastric emptying rate. Hormones coming from the duodenum, either by presence of acids, fats, hypertonicity, biptones, that means partially digested proteins, all have the ability to produce, as we said before, gas uh, secretin, cholecystokinin, GIB to decrease the gastric emptying. The GIT physiology, the intestinal gland secrete digestive enzyme that finalizes the digestion of all fat stuff, enzyme for carbohydrates, as we know, disaccharidases, enzyme of proteins, dipeptidases, and amino peptidases. And we have also enzyme for lipids, intestinal lipids, and this is in the intestine, will be in the intestine to uh, complete the action of digestion and do absorption. And the absorption will be occur in a finalized process, either in a sort of amino acids, monosaccharides, and fatty acids. Here we have the large bowel functions in absorption water, elimination of waste products. As we know also, the production of vitamin K will be occurring in the, in the colon. The appendix with spare patches uh, participate in the immune system of our body. This is clinical disease, gastroesophageal reflux. Just uh, have a look with his symptoms. Diagnostic is not with us. Just have an idea also. It's not mandatory. H. I. H. Pylori, H. Pylori infection, and it's medication, rule of surgery. Never mind. Kilmet antrectomy, it's that mean you are taking the antrum. And this was before the discovery of management of uh, H. pylori infection when the patient has gastric ulcer or duodenal ulcer and lytic to really bleeding the patients the years before will have an operation by enterectomy and vagal tranquil vagotomy to decrease the secretion also and to take off the antrum that's produced the gastrin because as we know the antrum has G cells that produce gastrin and the gastrin is main stimulant for SCL from parietal cells for SCL secretion. This is something it's not beyond our course. Dumping syndrome as we know we have two types of dumping syndrome. We have early and late dumping syndrome. Dumping, that's mean emptying of the gastric into the small intestine, usually after gastric surgery. Sometimes we have, per se, gastrectomy. And after gastrectomy, we have connection between, per se, the proximal part or the distal part of the esophagus to the small intestine. Loop, what's called rho and y, like this one. That's why here, no, no reception because we have gastrectomy, no stomach. So the contents will be uh, emptying fastly from the oral cavity to the esophagus to the small intestine. And the early one is that the symptoms occur within 30 minutes. The pathophysiology, if you have eating high food high in carbohydrates and electrolytes that's well 
في هايبر اوزمولر باي اوزموزيس ويل درو ووتر انسايد ذا لومين اند ويل كوز هاي بوتنشن ذاتس واي ان ذا ايرلي تايب اوف دامبينج سندروم ذا بيشن ويل هاف سيمبتومز اوف دراوزنس اند سويتنج later on it's called late type of dumping syndrome increase in the blood sugar that's mean if you have eating high concentration or high glycemic uh, meal this stimulate the increased secretion of insulin and when the insulin is secreted will lead to hypoglycemia later on so starting with Osmosis by drawing of water and hypoperfusion status, an early type of dumping syndrome, and the late type by production of high insulin to digest high glucose intake. Both of them are common complication after gastric surgery. So this is the things that uh, how to decrease dumping syndrome. يعني frequent instead of three meals to two pieces six five meals not highly يعني hyper or smaller type the and not high glycemic diet as we know here we have the alimentary tract the proximal part middle part and distal part the middle part starting as you know the first part from the what's called four gut And also we have mid gut, that means the proximal, the middle, and the hind gut, the distal. And this classification depends on anatomy and the embryology. Uh, as we know, the middle part of the gastric intestinal tract, it's responsible for absorption. And complete absorption will be taken on in the right intestine. It is starting from the second part. This is the middle alimentary tract. From the half, second half of the duodenum to the jejunum ileum to the ascending colon. As we know, also it depends this classification on the blood supply. The foregut celiac trunk, the mid gut on, it depends on superior mesenteric artery, And the hind gut, that means the one third of transverse colon and descending colon to the anal canal. It depends on inferior mesenteric artery. While the mid gut to the second, second part of duodenum from this one third of distal transverse colon to the second half of duodenum, it depends on superior mesenteric artery. While the four gut, The proximal part of gastrointestinal tract, its blood supply coming from the celiac artery. This is very important point in anatomy and embryology. The physiology of vomiting, we talked about it a little bit last lecture. As we know that we have an area, which is called the vomiting center. And the vomiting center are in also and another one called chemo chemo receptor trigger zone this chemo receptor trigger zone and vomiting center are regions or centers for vomiting in the brain when they are stimulated this region is the vomiting center they initiate the process of vomiting reflex different cause of nausea and vomiting stimulate this region in different ways as we know either Visual stimulation, vestibular, either from hearing something or seeing something. Both of them will have by afferent renal. This afferent renal have the message to the vomiting center. And the vomiting center produce the vomiting process. As we know, The motion sickness, which is very famous, to the patient have nausea and vomiting, and give patients 
anti-muscarinic receptors because the action of vomiting is through the muscarinic receptors. So the, the treatment for nausea and vomiting will be anti-muscarinic. In general, vomiting is reflex behavior. That means have affront neurons, center, or starting like this, receptor, affront neuron, center, effront neuron, and effector. This is the arc, it's called arc of reflex behavior. Receptor, affront neuron to the center, then effront neuron to the effector to have action. So in process of vomiting, we have expulsion of the casting of the contents via the mouth. What's happening will be evoked by, by evoked tickling throat, distension of the stomach, or duodenum, shor bit deadness, painful injury, it is a mediator, or emetics, hagat amal like vomiting. It's controlled by vomiting center, medulla oblongata, preceded by nausea, tachycardia, pallor, this, this, this is the things happening before the vomiting. We have nausea, tachycardia, pallor, dizziness, sweating, dilatation of the pupils. Because this is, we have acetylcholine, that means parasympathetic. Series of riches precede vomiting. And here, riches was the difference between vomiting and reaching. Reaching, it's unyielding, unyielding. That means no vomitus to outside. While vomitus is yielding, we have vomitus to outside. Chemoreceptor in the stomach and duodenum, we have chemoreceptors. That's if there is emetic thing inside the stomach, this process will be preceded. Receptors in the chemoreceptor trigger zone, which is near the floor of the fourth ventricle, it is beside the blood brain period. That means abomorphine is one of the things that having this action. What happened exactly during vomiting? We have as follows we have reverse peristalsis. As we know, peristalsis coming from proximal to distal. You will have reverse peristalsis from distal to proximal, from small intestine to the duodenum. Sometimes we have, if we have a vomiting, we may, uh, we have contents from the stomach. Sometimes from duodenum and the stomach. Sometimes from intestine, duodenum and the stomach to outside. To have vomiting, we have to relax the pyrex sphincter. We have inspiration, then attempt false expiration with closed glottis. Contraction of abdominal muscles to expel of the vomitus to outside. And lower sphincter sphincter, all the sphincter should be relaxed here. Pyrex sphincter, lower sphincter sphincter, upper sphincter sphincter, this is the things. And here again, al fark bain reaching and vomitus. And yielding, that means we have upper sphincter sphincter contraction. That is the alik ma'indi. Now, in the vomitus, in the unyielding vomitus, was called reaching. While if the upper sphincter sphincter is relaxed, that means we'll have yielding. Hanintig indana vomitus, unsemi fil haladi vomiting. The control of vomitus, we have higher centers, we have chemical trigger zone, we have leprenthine in the ear of receptors, we have reaching receptors in the stomach, in the duodenum, in the small intestine. We have touch receptors in the throat. We have mechano receptors and chemo receptors in the stomach and duodenum. All of these are the receptors of the vomiting receptors. So from the reaching, from the higher center, from the thine, touch, mechano receptors, chemo receptors of the duodenum and the stomach, all have its relay on the vomiting center in the labrangata. 
and from medulla oblongata from the vomiting center will have sending different neurons mainly through the vagus nerve to have effector either to intracranial nervous system to the muscle gastric muscle as you said this will be contraction and relaxation relaxation of the sphincters and contraction of the muscles to expel the vomitus from proximal from distal to proximal from small intestine per se to duodenum duodenum to stomach stomach to esophagus esophagus to outside small bowel motility we talked about that last time as you said last time here Small bowel motility makes chyme with secretion slowly propels contents. The transient time in the small intestine is around two to four hours. Segmentation, most common type of motion, peristalsis, all of these things, we talked about it last time. The most important thing is here is regarding the law of intestine. The law of intestine, we have local distinction leads to contraction above and relaxation below to have peristalsis. We have also what's called intestinal intestinal reflex. What's the meaning of intestinal intestinal reflex? It is over distension leads to leads to relaxation of large part of small intestine. What's called decompensatory. If you have over distension of one part of the of small intestine will lead to decompensation by a long segment of bowel. And this is very important. That means it's called decompensatory. Also, what's called iliogastric reflex, starting from ilium, and have gastric reflex. What's the meaning of that? Ilio, that means the first word. It's starting the distance of the ilium, resulting in decreasing gastric motility. The other one, gastroiliar reflex, is very important. Increase motility because gastroiliar, that means starting in the gastric. So the gastric increase motility and secretion of the stomach leads to increase motility in the terminal ileum. It is very helpful one. The gastrocolic, that means starting in the stomach and it elicits its action on the colon. Also by the vagus nerve. Mainly this reflex is by vagus nerve. It increases motility and secretion of the stomach, resulting in increased motility of the colon. That's why here, many patients coming to clinic saying, when we are eating, we are going to toilet. This is normal and very nice action, even in pediatric type, of, to avoid impacted stool. Because this physiological reflex helping in emptying the Colic reflex here after gastro colic reflex. This is the content inside the colon. It's not the food you are eating at the same time. But the patient will say like this: When I am eating a meal, I'm going to toilet. This is very normal physiological phenomena, and it is very helpful in emptying the contents or all contents of the colon after you are eating. In feed fasting person, the MMC is called migrating motor compass starting from the mainly the half of the stomach or in the middle of the stomach and it processed downwards to, to empty the stomach and small intestine and even large intestine from its contents preparing the gastrointestinal tract for the next meal. It has quiescent period around 30 and 90 minutes, then periods of intense propulsive contraction, which takes around three to six minutes, then this pattern to migrate down from proximal to distal. And here the one, as we said last time, if a child, per se, having a coin, a coin, real, عشر real, the Pyloric sphincter, as we said, only spares 3 mil per 30 mil of, of chyme and retaining back to the proximal stomach 27 mil. If you have per se coin, this coin will not be evacuated from the stomach until you are not in the status of feeding. You are in fasting. 
during fasting the intense contraction of MMC leading to completely relaxing the sphincters will allow this coin to by passing this area to the anal canal. Motility of the small intestine. This is question. Take it in your mind. Emptying of the ileum into the cecum. Distension of the terminal ileum. We have elicits its reflex contraction and relaxation of ileocecal sphincter. Very important. If you have now distension proximal to ileocecal valve, this allows the valve to go to open and relax to pass these contents from proximal to distal. Ilium empties in control squares, the same like sphincteric, the bilorex sphincter, into the cecum, permitting exceeding ability of the colon to absorb salt and water. If we have increasing the contents and pressure in the cecum, this increasing distally will cause contraction of ileocecal valve. While it's, if it is proximal, will allow the sphincter to be relaxed. So, if the distension and the pressure distal to ileocecal valve, that's been in the cecum, increase, will shut down the sphincter, the ileocecal valve. While the pressure or the contents inside, proximal to ileocecal valve, in the terminal ileum, increase, will allow the sphincter to relax, to pass these contents from proximal to distal. We have now just uh, some words regarding lower alimentary canal, uh, which is starting from the second half of the ascending colon, as we said, mainly one third of distal uh, transverse colon to the anal canal, bypassing descending colon, sigmoid colon, rectum, and anal canal. Colon, it is receiving around 500 to 1,500 ml of fluid from ileum per day. The main action here of the colon, either to absorb or not to absorb. That's why a patient will have diarrhea. It is a patient not absorbing water. That's why a lot of fluid is coming through the anal canal. While in a constipating patient. That means that its colon have the ability to absorb more than usual. That's why we'll have dry dry stool and will be what's called constipation. The words of constipation means if you are less than three times per week. So it's called constipation. Because the normal defecation or habit of defecation either three times per day or three times per week. The colon absorb around 550 to 100 ml per day. Longitudinal smooth muscle, as we know, we have anterior and two laterals. And this is starting from the cecum at the base of the appendix. And this is a landmark to know where is the appendix, confluence or, uh, yes, confluence of this tinea on the base of the cecum. While this tinea, longitudinal one, on the anterior, on both lateral, will be confused on the upper part of the rectum. That's why during operations, if you know where are you, either this segment is rectum or sigmoid, if you can see the tinea and you can differentiate between different uh, difference between anterior and lateral tinea. So this is sigmoid colon. If you cannot differentiate, we confuse this tinea as one segment. You cannot differentiate between lateral and anterior. This is the upper part of rectum. Descending and sigmoid colon, rectum and canal from pelvic neurons regarding the nerve supply. As we know, the foregut and midgut mainly we are talking about vagus nerve, vagus nerve. 
while the hind gut, that's mean from transverse colon to the anal canal, it is stimulated parasympathetic and sympathetic as follows. Parasympathetic from pelvic neurons, S2, 3, and 4. While sympathetic, it is from splanchnic, splanchnic neurons, which have greater and lesser. Okay? And this is the autonomic nervous system supplying the hind gut have certain actions. We, as we know, parasympathetic to stimulate activity, sympathetic inhibit motility. In the anal canal, in the anal canal, sympathetic all the time have the ability to contract the sphincters, having the continent status. So the internal sphincters will be shut down in normal situations by, sphincter, by sympathetic nervous system. When we have now building up of threshold volume inside the rectum, the same like urinary bladder for urination, to certain volume, we have a stress receptor. These receptors have the action which is called enteroenteric or enteroparasympathetic through the pelvic neurons to its center in the pelvis. This action, when we are limiting, we are reaching the threshold volume inside the rectum, will have contraction of the rectum and relaxation of the sphincter by parasympathetic nervous system. So if the circumstances are convenient, the process will pass through your defecation. While if the circumstances is not convenient, will have contraction of external. Now this external sublying by internal within the nerve and it is somatic it is under voluntary control will shut down this process and elevating the stool bolus upwards so in normal circumstances sympathetic nervous system controlling the status of continence by contraction of the sphincter while when are building the volume of the stool inside the rectum to the threshold volume, immediately we have the action of parasympathetic nervous system to inhibit internal sphincter contraction to be relaxed and contraction of the rectum muscle to have the act of defecation if the circumstances are convenient. While if the circumstances are not convenient, this is well be inhibited, this process of defecation by internal within the nerve, by voluntary control to, to shut down this process. And this is the process, the same like urination, by sympathetic and parasympathetic. Colonic motility, as we know, we have antiperistalsis in proximal colon, segmental contraction in the history. As we said, we have storage type, we have mixing type, and we have peristaltic propulsive movement. This is in colon. Small intestine, we haven't, we haven't receptive storage type, we haven't in the small intestine. In the stomach, we have the three. In the esophagus, only peristalsis, no mixing, no storage or receptive uh, relaxation. Net, slow net of propulsion, as we are. Mass movement, sometimes we have this mass movement involving a long segment of colon, maybe from proximal to distal. Also in the colon, we have what's called retro peristalsis, retroversion. That's mean, instead of going from proximal to distal, it will be from distal to proximal. This is the net movement in the colon. Antiperistalsis in the proximal colon, segmental contraction, 
storage type, mass movement. Colonic reflexes, it is important. Colono colonic reflex. This decompensatory, that's mean when you have segment of distension, well decompensated by long segment of relaxation. And this is what happened exactly if you have impacted per se stool in the rectum or mechanical obstruction. This will cause distension of one segment leading to a long segment of relaxation and distension. Gastrocolic reflex, this is what, what's called very helpful. Rapid neural phase, later phase mediated by hormones, per, for example, or especially gastrin. When you have food inside the stomach, this motility and secretion in the stomach will lead to increased peristalsis movement in the colon to empty its contents to outside. Reflexes of anchoral sphincter, as we said, if you have distension of the rectum resulting in defecation when you're reaching the volume, relax or reflex relaxation of internal sphincter by parasympathetic. If the convenient, if the circumstances are convenient, will proceed to defecate. If not, this will be contraction by external anal sphincter by voluntary control through internal within the nerve. And this is the volume, so it's very important in our subspecialty. Defecation, it's urge elicited by distension of the rectum. Urge subsides unless external sphincter relax. Both reflex and voluntary sacral spinal is integrated center with input from higher center. People with stylus muscle and internal sphincter relax. That's mean if you have the defecation process. Intra-abdominal pressure elevated dramatically by force inspiration. Then contraction of both the respiratory and abdominal muscles. Intra-abdominal pressures may reach 200 centimeter water. That's mean 150 millimeter mercury. Will do. طبعاً هذا من كل ما يزيد كل ما يقل الفينس رتين. And this is the problems of constipation. Contraction of the rectum and anal canal. If it is convenient, so we'll expel the stool through the anal canal to outside. Intestinal obstruction is a clinical diagnosis, not uh, in our يعني, course. Just I put it for you to understand. موضوع Crohn's, موضوع ulcerative colitis, irritable bowel syndrome, predisposing factors. طبعا, irritable bowel syndrome it is a diagnosis of exclusion. If you have nothing by all investigation, sometimes this alternating behavior of the colon by constipation and diarrhea and sometimes more it's called dominant diarrhea or dominant constipation or alternating between diarrhea and constipation. This is called irritable bowel syndrome when there is no pathological diagnosis, no mechanical causes, no pathological causes, and the patient sometimes complaining of alternating diarrhea with constipation or sometimes dominated of constipation or dominated of diarrhea. So by exclusion, you can diagnose irritable bowel syndrome. Medications, okay. GIT secretions, which is the main important things here. Salivary, we have function. Initial starts digestion by alpha myelase. Some words here about GIT secretion. As we know, starts secretion by salivary. Function initial starts by alpha myelase will be digestion of starch starting in the stomach, in the, in the mouth. And initial triglyceride digestion by lingual lipase, uh, Erips uh, ebiners, and the tip of the of the of the tongue. This is the area of the glands that produce lingual lipase. Lubrication of the food is one of the main affections of the salivary secretion. Protection of the mouth and esophagus. Its composition of around one to one point five liter. It's high in potassium and bicarbonates and low in sodium and chloride. As you said, anything high in bicarbonate will be low in chloride and the vice versa. It's hypotonic, lingual lipase, amyl lipase, calicarines. This is the main secretion of saliva. When it is low volume rate or flow rate, lowest osmolarity, we can feel a sodium or chloride, we can feel low. While the bicarbonate, 
والبوتاسيوم بيبل بي هاي ان ا لو فلو ريت اف ذا سلايفا اتس ان ا هاي فلو ريت ويل بي ذا سيم اور كلوز تو بلازما كونسنتريشن فورميشن وي هاف باروتيد اون ذا مانديبل اون ذا انجل اوف ذا مانديبل سب مانديبل اون ذا لوور سيرفيس اوف ذا مانديبل سب لينجوال اس ذا نيم اليسيد behind or below the tongue GIT secretion or saliva when we have uh, as we know we have parasympathetic and sympathetic both of them have an action here parasympathetic through acetylcholine to stimulate the saliva through calcium intracellular release of calcium that is to increase saliva while sympathetic will leads by nor epinephrine on beta receptors through cyclic AMB to decrease the saliva secretion. So in general, sympathetic is decreasing, it causes decrease the saliva. While the parasympathetic conditional or conditioning like food, nausea, uh, smell, all of this will stimulate parasympathetic to have acetylcholine to increase the saliva. Dehydration, fever, and uh, sleep. Uh, this is plus anticholinergic will inhibit parasympathetic and leading to inhibit the saliva. So the stimulation of saliva. One conditioning conditions like food, seeing the food, nausea, smell, all this is will produce saliva. Dehydration, fever, sleep, anticholinergic will decrease the saliva. Sympathetic nervous system stimulation will decrease the saliva. Salivary secretion as seen aligned with acinar cells, secret initial saliva, which is similar to plasma, as we said. Ducts lined with columnar epithelium modifies saliva, reabsorb sodium chloride, and secrete potassium and hydrocarbonic uh, bicarbonate. As we said, if in flow, low rate or high flow rate, it depends. If high, will be potassium and bicarbonate, low, will be sodium and chloride mainly. Aldosterone acts on ductal cells. Aldosterone is in the terminal in the renal system. That's they have the renin and glutensinogen aldosterone mechanism. And aldosterone, when it's secreted, will lead to reabsorption of sodium and excretion of potassium. The same thing here will be in the ductal cells in the salivary glands to increase the absorption of sodium and secretion of potassium. Regulation of saliva or salivary secretion by both sympathetic and parasympathetic. Parasympathetic muscarinic receptor through uh, calcium release will increase the saliva, while sympathetic through beta receptors cycle and B to decrease. Gastric secretions in general. Cell types, parietal cells in the body secrete HCL and intrinsic factor, which is responsible for B12 absorption. Chief cells, mainly in the body, secrete pepsinogen, which convert converted to pepsin. This is the active one, or active form, it's pepsin. G cells in the atrium, secrete gastrin, will have the stimulation action on parietal cell to release HCL. Mechanism by the cells secrete HCL and absorb bicarbonate. As we know, this is بس إعادة carbonic acid أو carbon dioxide plus water will call carbonic acid dissociation into hydrogen ions and bicarbonate. By hydrogen, potassium, ATPase bomb, hydrogen into the lumen, chloride accompanied طبعا ذا عن طريقة channels of chloride to produce SCL. Here it's called proton bomb inhibitors because the omeprazole اللي هي proton bomb inhibitor block this this region and this step to decrease gastric secretion in some patients with gastric ulcer or duodenal ulcer. Potassium gets out by potassium sodium ATPase bomb, as we said, going inside influx of potassium two ions and influx of sodium three ions. Bicarbonate gets out by chloride bicarbonate ATPase, alkaline type is called this one, as we said, according to the area. Stimulation of gastric secretion by vagus, acetylcholine, direct intervention of parietal cells, 
uh, it is acetylcholine M3 receptor messenger through the intracellular calcium release and leading to stimulation of parietal cell to increase SCL secretion. Indirect by innervation of the G cells, increasing gastric secretion is a neurotransmitter is GRB. So the vagus stimulating directly parietal cells through acetylcholine by its receptor on the parietal cell was called M3 receptors. This M3 receptors, when in combining with acetylcholine, it trigger a process intracellular of release of calcium that initiate the process of SCL secretion, the proton bomb to be secreted hydrogen ions. Also, vagus have indirect stimulation on G cells to increase gastrin secretion through GRB. That's leading to increase the gastrin. And in turn, this gastrin will have action on the parietal cell to release the HCL secretion. Vagotomy, atropine block the direct action, not indirect action. Vagotomy block both of them. So the vagus nerve have direct innovation to parietal cell through M3 receptors to release SCL secretion. Also, vagus acetylcholine have here GRB, not acetylcholine, on the G, enteral G cell to secrete gastrin. This in turn, gastrin will stimulate the parietal cell to produce SCL secretion. Gastric secretion, gastrin stimulated by meal, interacting with cholecystokinin receptor. Al, 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 second messenger is intracellular calcium. So this is gastric secretion stimulated mainly by gastrin. And gastrin coming from G cell in the antrum. Histamine, histamine, this is the second hormone responsible for gastric secretion. Histamine is released from enterochromic like cells. And its receptor is called H2 receptor through the GS proteins leading to adenyl cyclase. The second messenger is cyclic AMB. And this is the second hormone leading to increased gastric secretion. Cymetidine, this is H2 receptor blocker, will block this action. Potentiation effect, greater action by, stimulatory, by stimulating effect. Histamine potentiate acetylcholine and gastrin. And acetylcholine potentiate histamine and gastrin release. This is potentiating action or effects. A greater action by stimulating stimuli, that's mean gastrin, histamine, potentiate acetylcholine and gastric release. Also, acetylcholine potentiate histamine and gastric release. And histamine will releasing uh, potentiate the action of acetylcholine and gastrin. This is the main effect. An inhibition by feedback mechanism. Low pH, inhibit gastric secretion, thus inhibit H secretion, hydrogen ion secretion. A somatostatin, it's coming from D cells in the stomach. And the small intestine. And it is the universal inhibitor lead to decrease all the processes of the GIT system. Directed or direct by stimulation of GI. Uh, indirect inhibition of histamine and gastrin. This is somatostatin have the ability to inhibit gastrin and histamine. Prostaglandins by stimulation of GI proteins. So this somatostatin actions to decrease this gastric secretion, either through antariq, a direct stimulation of GI, or indirect through prostaglandins also. Gastric secretions, as we said, here we have three regions, and this is the bialuric sphincter. Gastric secretion, the writer cells secrete acid and intrinsic factor, shifts the secrete pepsinogen, that 
will be converted to pepsin, and this is a catalyzing enzyme for proteins. Enterochromaffin like cells to produce histamine, and this histamine will, will have an action to stimulate gastric secretion. In turn, for the last time, hydrochloric acid from the parietal cells. We have here the lumen, which is called apical area, and basolateral area through the blood supply here, this region. In the apical area, we have the process starting from mitochondria of carbon dioxide plus water in the presence of enzyme called carbonic anhydrase enzyme will be converted to carbonic acid. Carbonic acid will be dissociated into hydrogen ions and bicarbonate. This hydrogen ions will go through a AT base bump. Hydrogen, potassium, this is the proton bump inhibit, but proton bump uh, mechanism will be evacuation of hydrogen to the lumen and reabsorption of potassium. This potassium in turn have an ability to exchange with, with sodium, what's called sodium potassium at base bump. The chloride coming from where? From bicarbonate going to inside the capillary of gastric veins and retaining the chloride to inside the, the parietal cells. This chloride will go through its specific channels to the lumen of the stomach, combining of chloride to uh, protons, that's mean hydrogen ions will reduce HCL uh, secretion. Again, here the regulation of stomach acid secretion, parietal cell. On the parietal cell, we have different receptors. We have mainly three for, for stimulation and one for inhibition. Stimulation by gastrin, histamine, acetylcholine, and inhibition by somatostatin. So the second messenger inside parietal cells, either to stimulate the proton bump, inhib proton bump, either to release or to inhibit its release. Kephalic phase, gastric phase, intestinal phase. We discover, we, we, we cover all of this area. Mainly, the kephalic phase, it happens, or it, it, it giving us one third of gastric secretion before the meal reaching the stomach. Gastric, gastric phase have the ability to produce around two third of gastric secretion. So kephalic phase produce one third of gastric secretion before the meal reaching the stomach. And the gastric phase will produce two third of gastric secretion when the meal reaching the stomach. Okay, here kephalic and gastric phases. We discover it so thoroughly. And we have this, the arms of stimulation by positive. Here, another thing here. Liver and biliary system. This is very, very tough uh, subject. Just in, in some words. Liver and biliary system. As we know, this is also one kind of secretion of the GIT, spile. In biochemistry, we'll take in details how will be formed bilirubin cycle uh, coming from spleen uh, to the liver, conjugation, uh, then going uh, to the biliary system, then to small intestine, and what's happening exactly, reabsorption into uh, Interior hepatic circulation, all of these things should be uh, understandable in a, a good, 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 uh, good manner. Bile, that means it is the bile salts, phospholipids, cholesterol, and bile pigments in alkaline solution, around 500 ml per day. Bile salts, sodium and potassium salt of bile acids. Um, um, amphibathic, that means emulsification. This is the main idea of the bile to emulsify. The, the 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 fats emulsifying lipids into missiles when their concentration is above the critical missile concentration bile salts on the outer side hydrophilic while hydrophilic that's mean is dissolved in the missile interior fatty acids 
and monosaccharides are in the inside. طبعا هذا كل حاجة تأخذها أنت بالبايو كيمستري. Formation of bile by hepatocytes to hepatic ducts stored in the gall bladder. Primary bile salt and cholinic acid, cholic acid and chinodeoxycholic acid. Synthesized from cholesterol by the hepatocytes in the intestine by bacteria secondary bile acids. هناك بيكون عندي primary from the liver and secondary in the intestine by the action of the bacteria. Converted into deoxycholic acid and lithocholic acid. Bile salts are, that means, ايش معنات bile acid? معناته يا إما cholic acid or chinodeoxycholic acid. A deoxycholic and a lithocholic acid, they are secondary bile acids. If we have to add sodium and potassium, we'd call bile salt. يعني bile acids, لما تضيف لها sodium or potassium, will be bile salt. Conjugation with glycine and taurine. This is in the liver. 95% reabsorbed from small intestine by sodium bile salt co-transport system via sodium potassium ATPase bump. Some are transported by non-ionic diffusion. Remaining 5 to 10% enter the colon and converting the salts of the secondary bile acids, uh, lithocholate, insoluble and go to stool, what deoxycholic is absorbed for recirculation. And this is the one will have the color of the stool, brown color. Regulation of biliary system or secretion by cholecystokinin and acetylcholine. Liver produces bile, bile pigments, that's mean bilirubin, has enterohepatic circulation, as we said, coming from the liver, then through the right or left hepatic uh, ducts, then common hepatic ducts, then the common bile duct, through the ampulla of water to the duodenum. Bile canonically and ducts. As we know, the secretion of bile is secreted by the hormone cholecystokinin to increase the secretion. Bile enters small intestine by increasing the plasma of cholecystokinin and pancreaticozymine lead to contraction of the gallbladder, relaxation of sphincter of OD. At the end, we'll have increased the flow of the bile into the common bile duct and into the duodenum. Some words about pancreatic secretion. Pancreatic secretion, <coughs> high bicarbonate to neutralize the acidic chyme that reaches the duodenum. Its enzymes are important for digestion of carbohydrates, fats, and proteins. Bunch of grapes like salivary glands. Granules containing the digestive enzymes, zymogenes, form in cells and discharge by exocytosis. Pancreatic ducts will go to the ampulla of water, then common bile duct. Opens through the duodenal ampulla, encircled by sphincter of OD. Arsenal cell produce small volume of initial secretion, mainly containing sodium, sodium, and chloride. Adductal cells modify the above by adding more carbo bicarbonate and absorbing chloride by chloride bicarbonate exchange mechanism. Water moves in permeable to making the secretion isotonic. Composition characterized by high volume, same concentration of sodium, potassium as plasma, higher in bicarbonate, lower in chloride, isotonic, and also we have, this is enzymatic secretion, was called lipase amylase proteases. Pancreatic secretion is circulation by secretin, cholecystokinin, and, and acetylcholine. Secretin acts via CMB on ductal cells to produce copious secretion of very alkaline juice, poor enzymes, and increase in bile secretion. Secre uh, cholecystokinin by eye cells of the duodenum acts in response to small peptides or peptones, amino acids, and fat in the duodenum. On acinar cell, increase enzyme secretion. On ductal cell, potentiate secretion, secre 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 secretin action to stimulate the HCL secretion. This is the cholecystokinin. Acetylcholine, the same action like cholecystokinin. Endocrine bacteria, this is alpha, beta, delta uh, cells 
in the pancreas, it's around 2% of pancreatic mass. It's called islands of Langerhans. We have four major cell types. We have alpha for glycagon, beta for insulin, delta for somatostatin, F for pancreatic polypeptides. Exocrine pancreas, that means the main site of the, of the pancreas, 98% to produce the water, electrolytes, organate in centroacinar and intercalated ducts. Pancreatic enzymes organate in acinal cells, while well, fine products is colorless, orderless, and isosomatic alkaline fluid that contain digestive enzyme, which is amylase for carbohydrates, lipase for, for lipids, and uh, trypsinogens for proteins. Exocrine pancreas, around 500 to 800 ml fluid secreted per day, and alkaline pH result from secreted bicarbonate, which serves to neutralize gastric acid and regulate the pH of intestine, enzyme digest carbohydrates, protein, and fats, as we said. Bicarbonate secretion, centroacinal cells, and ductal epithelium secretes around 20 millimole of bicarbonate per liter in basal state. Fluid pH from 7.6 to 9 acts on vehicle to carry an active proteolytic enzyme to the renal lumen. Sodium and potassium concentration are constant and equal those of plasma. Colorized secretion varies uh, inversely with bicarbonate, as we said before. Bicarbonate secretion is formed from carbonic acid by enzyme carbonic anhydrase. A main stimulant for bicarbonate secretion is secretin, cholecystokinin, gastrin, acetylcholine. A major inhibitors, atropine, this is area of MCQs. Atropine, somatostatin, pancreatic polypeptides, and glucone. Secretin, released from duodenal mucosa, it responds to duodenal luminal pH less than 3. Enzyme secretion, that means the enzyme responsible for digestion of food. We have acinal cells secrete iso, isozymes, amylase, lipase, and protease. Major stimulants, cholestocarnine, acetocarnine, acetylcholine, secretin, vasointestinal polypeptides synthesized in the endoplasmic reticulum of acinal cells and packaged in the zymogene granules, released from the acinal cell into the lumen of the sini or acinals, and then transported to the duodenal lumen where the enzymes are activated. Amylase, only digestive enzymes secreted by pancreas in active form, function optimally in a pH of 7, hydrolyzed starch, and glycogen to glucose, maltose and maltose and dextrins. Lipase function optimally under pH of 7 to 9, phosphide and dulosphide in presence of bile salts. Pancreatic secretion, if it is in low flow rate, will be isotonic solution composed mainly of sodium and chloride. If the crack be saliva. At high flow rate, isotonic composed mainly of sodium and bicarbonate. This is area of MCQs. Trypsinogen secreted by the pancreas converted to trypsin by plush border enzymes and enteropeptidase. It contains polysaccharides that prevent self-digestion. Trypsin convert chemotrypsin to chemotrypsin, chemotrypsinogen to chemotrypsin, and activates other proenzymes to active enzymes. Trypsin shapes autocatalytic reactions. Pancreas contains tri uh, trypsin inhibitor factor that protect it from autodigestion. In acute pancreatitis, phospholipase A2 is activated, leading to formation of lysothene from lecithin, causing disruption or disruption of pancreatic tissue and necrosis. Enzymes of pancreas. We have proteases, essential for protein digestion, secreted as bro enzymes and required activation for proteolytic activity. Duodenal enzymes, enterokinase, converts trypsinogen to trypsin. Trypsin in turn activates chemotrypsin, elastase, carboxybeptidase, and phospholipase. Within the pancreas, enzyme activation is prevented by antiprotetic enzyme, as you may have in the autodigestion. The last two uh, slides, so it's called, this is regarding biochemistry and the metabolism in our body. During absorptive states, we have different mechanism or 
post oppressive state or during starvation in absorptive state that means after eating the main thing is the glucose will be going inside the liver to be converted to glycosol then also we have absorption of small nutrients of fatty acids or amino acids so the main absorption of glucose fatty acids and amino acids amino acids into the muscles and liver fatty acids into the liver and glucose into the liver muscle and most body cells to have catabolism to have energy in the liver the glucose will be converted to glycogen the fatty acid will be converted into triglycerides the amino acids will be converted into proteins and inside the liver to 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 have triglycerides post obstructive state this is in general we have to we are, we are not eating but it's not starvation يعني 8 ساعات we have protein glycogen triglycerides protein in the muscle glycogen in the liver and the muscle and triglycerides in the adipose tissue so we need to produce energy from these macules from adipose tissue we have to convert triglyceride to glycerol and fatty acids fatty acid will be going to the liver to produce ketones and ketones will be a fuel for production of energy in the nervous and nervous system and the fatty acids also non nervous tissue having utilized the fatty acids to produce energy uh, glycogen in the muscle will be lactate by, 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 will be converted into lactate pyruvate uh, going to the liver to produce glucose from non carbohydrate resources and this glucose will be using in the nervous system for production of energy proteins in the muscle or other cells will be converted to amino acids this amino acid is going to the liver to have a new uh, new genesis to produce glucose from from non carbohydrate resources and some amino acid will go to nerve nervous system to utilize as energy production this is يعني a summary of either absorptive or post absorptive state comparison between absorptive state and post absorptive state absorptive that mean بعد ما تكون انت ماكل post absorptive state that mean يعني more than 8 hours of of non eating between meals per se so here we have to produce more proteins triglycerols and glycogen glycogen from the liver Uh, triglycerides from fatty acids and uh, proteins from amino acids glucose will be the most fuel for production of energy and also this glucose the extra for energy will be going to in the liver to be converted to glycogen and fat in post operative state we have glycogen to be converted to the glucose triglycerides will be converted to fatty acids and glycerol and proteins to be to amino acids and most the energy coming from the fatty acids and ketones and pyruvate lactate will glycerol and amino acid converted into the glucose and production of glucose in the liver by mechanism of new genesis to utilize then the glucose uh, for production of energy for minus status that means prolonged fasting it will be by pancreatic hormones insulin and glycogon The post-operative states, that means he has starvation, uh, production of insulin and glucagon will be the main action here to produce energy as follows. Insulin synthesized in beta cells of islets of Langerhans, 80% must surgically removed before diabetes become clinically apparent. Pro-insulin transformed the endoplasmic reticulum of Golgi apparatus in the pancreas where it is packed into granules cleavage into insulin and residual uh, connecting peptides or C peptides. Insulin have main stimulants, glucose, amino acids, glycogon, GIB, cholecystokinin, sulfonylurea compounds, and beta sympathetic fibers. The major inhibitor of this area of MCQs, somatostatin, amylene, pancreatostatin, alpha sympathetic fibers. 
either beta for stimulation uh, and alpha for inhibition. Insulin produced by pancreatic ALA cells, so it is regulated by circulating glucose, circulating amino acids, sympathetic parasympathetic nervous system regarding the neurotransmitter is GIB to produce insulin. This is باختصار ايش اللي بيحصل انه بيتا سيلز هاف ستيمولنت فروم بلازما جلوكوز بلازما امينو اسيد جي اي بي باراسيمباتيك ذا مين انهبيتنس او انهبيتر او بيتا سيلز تو برودوس انسولين ايذا سيمباتيك اكتيفيتي او ابينيفرين فايت اور فلايت ريسبونس انكريز انسولين سيكريشن ويل ليد تو اكشن ان ذا ليفر ليفر اند ماسل اديبوس تيشو اند موست سيلز In most cells, glucose uptake, except brain, liver, exercising muscle, amino acid uptake, protein synthesis, protein breakdown will be decreased. Adipose tissue by the action of insulin increase fatty acid triglyceride synthesis and decrease lipolysis. In the liver, glycogen synthesis will be increased, while glycogenolysis, tahtimal glycogen will be decreased. In the liver, insulin will cause fatty acid and triglyceride synthesis and decrease gluconeogenesis. That's near al glucose from non carbohydrate resources. Plasma glucose control increased plasma will be stimulation through beta cells by increasing plasma glucose. The plasma insulin once increased have action to increase glucose uptake and in the liver to stop glucose output and net glucose uptake to decrease glucose uh, in the plasma. Insulin, and this is the main stimulant here by parasympathetic, by glucose uh, dependent insulinotrophic peptide or GIB, plasma glucose or amino acids, all are stimulants. While the only inhibitors is sympathetic activity. And the action will be in pancreatic islet cells, beta cells, to produce insulin. So the major stimulants, parasympathetic, increase plasma amino acid, increase plasma glucose, increase GIB, decrease plasma uh, epinephrine with bisympathetic activity. Diabetic keto acid is a clinical, clinical disease, will be in the pathology. Glycogon secreted by alpha cells of Langerhans elevates blood glucose level, axial insulin, through the stimulation of gluco glycogenolysis, glycogen, to produce glucose. And gluconeogenesis, production of glucose from non carbohydrate sources, major stimulants, amino acids, cholinergic fiber, beta sympathetic fiber, and major inhibitors, alpha sympathetic somatostatin insulin glucose. هي الأشياء التي لها علاقة بإنكريز الجلاكوجون سيكريشن on action of alpha b alpha cells of Langerhans in the pancreas either increase sympathetic activity by uh, epinephrine secretion and decrease plasma glucose increase plasma amino acids once we have gluco glycogon secretion increase that lead to action on adipose tissue or the liver. In adipose tissue, it increases lipolysis or decreases triglyceride synthesis. In the liver, it increases glycogenolysis, the glycogen. Uh, glycogen synthesis decreases. Gluconeogenesis, the glucose is the glucose. Glycogon, one of the stress factors. Ketone synthesis, protein breakdown will be increased, protein synthesis will be decreased. Glycogon secretion. On Langerhans alpha cells will increase liver glycogenolysis, يعني تحطيم الجلاكوجين, gluconeogenesis, production of glucose from non-carbohydrate resources, increase ketone synthesis, and that will lead to increased plasma glucose and increased plasma ketones. In general, hypoglycemia that means decreased plasma glucose. Will stimulate reflex via glucose receptors in central nervous system on adrenal medulla and activity of the sympathetic nervous system on the liver and adipose tissue. What will happen? Increase lipolysis in adipose tissue, increase glycogenolysis in the liver, 
increase glycogenesis in the liver, increase uh, glycinolysis in the skeletal muscle. All these action will increase plasma, glucose, fatty acid, and glycerols. Some words on ion metabolism. In general, we have uh, adult mean lose around 0.6 milligram per day. Uh, women lose double this number. Other dietary intake around 220 milligram per day. Absorption losses, that means 3 to 6 percent of ingested iron, were decreased uh, absorption by phytic acid, phosphates, and oxalates react with iron forming insoluble components. Alferric is ingested, alferrous is absorbed, ferric is re reduced to ferrous in brush border by ferric reductase. Stomach little absorption, but here alferric dissolved to ferrous by action of gastric acid and ascorbic acid. At duodenum, most of iron absorption will be occurring in the duodenum. Transport of ferrous into the enterocytes, some stored in ferritin level. Uh, that's why the storage of iron Remainder outer or remainder outer of uh, out, uh, or anterior size by ferroportin. Transferrin binds to ferrous in plasma, nearly 30% saturated. 70% of iron in hemoglobin, 30% in myoglobin, rest 27% in ferritin. Hemocidrin are deposits of ferritin molecules. Regulation of iron by intake, by stores, by erythropoiesis. Our whole body metabolism, we can have the other thing to talk about, metabolic rate, it depends on kilo calories, on the activity, on food ingestion, and total energy expenditure. Factor affecting metabolic rates are epinephrine, this is sympathetic, food, muscle activity, uh, adipose tissue, mainly brown adipose tissue activity, hormones. Hormones affecting metabolism, thyroid, thyroxine, adrenocortical hormone, cortisone, leptin. Here are some, some points regarding the hormones affecting metabolism, thyroxine, cortisone, leptin. This is a hormone very important. As we know, nervous system, many cells, action of T3, T4, to increase basalic rate, to increase heat production, uh, responsible to sympathetic input, and also here a feedback mechanism. If it is increased, will leading to decrease its secretion later on. Impossible controlling food intake, as as we know, the hunger it depends on leptin. As we know, leptin and ghrelin. As we say, leptin, leptin. هذا اسمه هرمون الشبع or غيرلين هذا هرمون الجوع بيطلع من mainly from the fundus of the stomach and له علاقة بقضية السكر اللي تكلمنا عن المرة فاتت increase hunger have inputs from many areas as inhibitory or stimulatory stimulation by palatable of the food Stress may be stimulatory or inhibitory. Condition or condition responses by seeing or something. And this is the main stimulant. While the inhibitor of hunger, increased body temperature, activation of st stretch receptors, increased plasma leptin, uh, 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 increased plasma GIT hormones, all of these will inhibit hunger in the brain uh, to feel that you are hungry. Increased plasma glycogon inhibits. Increased plasma insulin also inhibit brain uh, or hunger or feeling of hunger. Increased glucose in the plasma will inhibit. The only thing that increase may be stress, palatability of the food and some conditioned responses. 
थैंक यू वेरी मच